Yo, what it do squad, it's your boy Geek Samurai coming to you back with another video, man. In this video, I want to talk about AEW this week that just dropped last night. I watched it just a while ago. You know what I have to do? I have to be grinding so I won't be able to watch it live. But I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to watch it and I'm going to make sure I bring on my review every single week, man. I love this promotion and I'm so on board for what they're trying to do in competition with the other promotion named WWE, owned by Vince McMahon, who I cannot stand. So without any further ado, let's jump right into this review. Now, this contains spoilers, so if you haven't watched AEW Live this week on, my, on Wednesday Night Dynamite, y'all need to get into that because I'm telling you, this week was fantastic. I love the stories. I love the buildup from a full gear that's coming out next month in November. I think the first and final pay-per-view of this year before 2020 so without further ado let's start from the beginning we get to the opening of aew and we see cody being greeted by tony shivani in a limo cody and dustin come off of a private jet and they're on their way there this this live taping was taken in charleston West Virginia. So Cody and Dustin get on a private jet and they land in West Virginia in Charleston. And Tony Schiavone's the one that's meeting Cody. So Cody and Dustin, you know, they hop in a limousine ride and they're on the way to the arena. Because tonight is supposed to be the signing of the AEW title, world heavyweight title match for full gear. So we know that Chris Jericho and Cody are going to have a face to face. And it's good to see Tony Schiavone get out of the, you know, because he used to do it in WCW. He used to be at the announcer's commentary de desk, and then he would go out. If it wasn't Mean Gene Oakland, he would go out and do all the interviews with the superstar. So it's good to have that old vintage Tony Schiavone back again. So we kick off tonight's first match with Sammy Guevara versus Hangman Adam Page. Now, this was a good match. I, I love this match. I love the heel I love heel Sammy Guevara. Like, he's still new. He's still green, wet behind the ears. But I like some of his heel tactics that he did. Like, that one heel move that he did when he was on the top row. It looked like he was about to do, like, a somersault or a 450 splash or a shooting star press. We didn't know what he was about to do. He just jumps off the turnbuckle and slaps <laughs> Hangman Page in the face. I loved it. But Hangman Page has some discus elbow strikes. He has some discus lariats. And he as he finished off the match by doing a powerful off-the-ropes clothesline to get the pin one, two, three. Sammy Guevara looks strong as he got defeated, but I like the fact that he's going full heel. Inner circle is going full heel. And I love that. Loved it. This match, I give it a solid B because, you know. Let alone, it didn't lead up to anything at the end. This is not going to be like for a future title match or whatever. This is all about wins and losses in AEW. So this match was pretty solid. I wish I'd seen more out of Sammy Guevara, but I like his heel tendencies. Our next match is with Shannon, Portugal's perfect athlete, making an AEW debut, and she took on Sheeta. Um, This match was... I like Shannon... Shannon is new. I don't know too much about her, but I'm starting to come around. She She's still a little nervous debuting on AEW, so I had to give her a little pass. You know what I'm saying? I had to give her a pass. But, yo, Sheeta, she put on a match. When she took up that chair, I thought she was going to use that chair. For her to step over it and do that knee strike, I was like, bro, that, she was over with the fans. She delivered some aggressive knee strikes, man. She was over with the fans. She scored a victory. With that running knee strike to get the pin on Sh on Shannon. And like I said, Shannon got a, a loss, but it made her look strong. I want to see more women in this division, man. We have Brandy Rose. We have Rio, who's our current AEW Women's Champ. We still have Nala Rose, the native beast. You know what I'm saying? I want to see Ali. I'm still waiting for Ali wrestling. To, to She does dark matches, but I want to see her on the main roster, bro. Come on. The men's division is strong. Not only the tag team, but the men's division is strong already. Let's get our women equal to that, man. This is 2019. About to be 2020. Female is the future. And I say that in every video. Facts. Hashtag that. That Ron bars. Anyway, our next match was, I guess you could say, Chris Van Vliet. He was introducing 
the Rock and Roll Express. They were trying to like showcase the new tag belts for AEW. And all of a sudden, when they come out and they started talking about the tag titles and what this means, because they're, you know, they're Hall of Famers. All you see is Santana and Ortiz. Yo, they attack Rock and Roll Express and put one of the tag team, you know, Hall of Famers from the Rock and Roll Express. They threw them, they power, they did like a double side power bomb on on off the ramp onto like a table. You see one of them go right through the table. They get hurt. It was crazy to see them power get power bombed off the stage. That was crazy. Yo. Santana Ortiz is, like I said, this whole inner circle, they're such a great faction right now. And they're doing so many heelish things. I love it. Love it. So now we know that whoever wins this tag team title, which was the main event between Sierra Miero, you know, the Lucha Brothers, and SCU, they're probably going to have a match after full gear when you see the Young Bucks go get Santana Ortiz. Whoever wins that, they're probably going to have a tag title opportunity against the new AEW, crowned AEW tag team champions, which I like this build up with this heel. I love heels, man. I love anti-heels. I love the fact that they're, they have a reason why they're bad. And we're going to talk about my boy John Moxley later on. Next, we get a six-man tag between QT Marshall, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds versus the best friend, Chuck Tiller and Trent with Orange Cassidy. This was a good match. And now this is Halloween or whatever, Halloween's Eve, Hollow's Eve. So everybody, you know, AEW, the whole promotion was promoting, you know, Rick and Morty. They're coming out with new TV show, a new season on Cartoon Network, Adult Swim or whatever. So the whole theme around the ring, you see the turnbuckle dressed up with Rick and Morty. You see the crowd with Rick and Morty mask. You see everybody's intro music have Rick and Morty, you know, images from the TV show in it. So now we get to see a tag match. And I love this tag match because you see the best friends dressed up as Rick and Morty. And, and you know, Orange Cassidy, you know, he always got his hands in his pocket, shades on, he's ready to do his thing. This was a good match, man. Orange Cassidy has some nice spots, man. I love when he jumps through the middle rope, doing like a, a back, a backwards Tope Suicina with his hands in his pocket. And he does a kip up with his with his hands in his pocket. Yo, this was a good match. And we see that, you know, the best friends, they come through with the victory. And all you hear them chanting, Orange Cassidy, Orange Cassidy, Orange Cassidy. I loved it, man. This was a good match. I give this match a solid A. This is a fantastic match. It was entertaining. And the best friends are starting to get over with the crowds more and more. Every time they do their best friends hug, the crowd is popping for it. It is so over. I love it. Now, we finally get to sit down with the AEW champ, the El Champion, <laughs> the pain maker, Chris Jericho. And we see him come out. He showed boots. He got this Halloween blazer on, the suit jacket on you know, with his hair hanging down, and he's the first one to come out. Now, we know this because in a previous video, we see Tony Schiavone, Dustin Rhodes, Cody Rhodes coming up to the arena in the limo, and they're giving a story about how, you know, Dustin Rhodes was talking, to, you know, to one of his opponents or whatever, Tony Schiavone, back in the 80s. And Tony Schiavone's like, yo, you're not ready yet? So he opens the door, and he's talking to Dustin Rhodes, saying, you're not ready yet? And Dusty Rhodes is like, butt-ass naked. In no rush to go out to his opponent. And he one thing he told Tony Schiavone, that if I'm the last person to come out to greet my opponent, that means that I'm the star. And Cody took, you know, he took a keen, he took full, he was really focused on those words because he wants to make Chris Jericho wait. So he took notice of what Tony Schiavone was saying. And he took that advice and he was listening attentively. I should let Chris Jericho wait because I'm the star. Even though I'm challenging him for his title. I love that. So we see Chris Jericho come out. He's getting booed. Everybody's saying, you suck. He could say, you, he could say, you could suck all night. And then we see Tony Schiavone and we see Cody Rose come out. Cody Rose wearing like this blue, blue suit, long coat, suit jacket, looking all dapper. They finally meet and greet. They sign the contract one on one. And then Chris Jericho and Cody get into the middle and they shake hands. But it looks like Cody Rose grabs, you know, Chris Jericho and pulls him in even more. And then all of a sudden, we see a backstage camera on Sammy Guevara. And it looked like Jack Yeager. They're beating up Cody's brother, Dustin Rose. 
They're beating him up. Sammy Guevara said, I'm glad you signed that contract. I wasn't really paying attention because look what's happening back here. They're whooping their brother's ass, giving it to him. Dustin Yeager picks him up, slams him on the, uh, on the limo, on the trunk, and then slams his head into it. Then he takes the door and slams the car door into Dustin Rhodes' arm. So Cody, all of them scrambling, they're running aggressively backstage trying to tend to his brother. It's crazy. Cody runs out with his best friend and they try to rescue Dustin while Jericho lights the cigar and he just smirks. He lighting that cigar and they take off. They take off as a perfect heel that he is. This this is a great build up towards their match at Full Gear in November. I'm looking forward to this match and I cannot wait to watch it. So the next we go to the commercial and we come back, we get Kip Sabin and the Hybrid 2 versus the Elite, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. You really know how this goes. This was a great match. You know, I, I like this because Jack Evans and Angelico, they're good. Even though they're so green, even though green is their, you know, their attire, they are so green, but they're very athletic in the ring. I love it. Kip Saban, you know, the hybrid too, they were doing fly, flying move maneuvers all over the place. But, you know, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, they had their spots. Kenny Omega had his spots where he kept doing those snap, you know, those snap German suplex over and over. He finally gets the win. Trick or treat. Nick Jackson hits a super kick on Saban. And I liked it. It was a good match. Because when Kenny Omega hits that one Eagle Angel, it's a wrap, son. You already know it's one, two, three. This match was fantastic. I give it an A+. Plus. Solid A+. Plus. It was fantastic. And this just puts a win column in the tag team between the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Maybe because they're all elite, that's their trio. Maybe they'll be in a contention for a tag title match down the road. Now, we finally get this. It goes to commercial after this. But I like this. Before we go to commercial, I like the Young Bucks. You know, they're, they're celebrating. They won the victory. Now, they finally celebrating with the fans, shaking their hands, giving them high fives and everything. Now, we come across these two people who are dressed with Rick and Morty mask. But then they finally reveal themselves. It's Santana Ortiz. And they pull the Young Bucks over the barricade. And they start beating them over the guardrail. And they start beating them, beating them, beating them. And then it cuts to commercial. Santana and Ortiz does not like the Young Bucks at all. And we see that here. And their feud is just getting bigger and bigger, son. I love it. Because they're supposed to have a match at full gear as well. Everything I love the story that's being told throughout this, this show. Because it's building towards full gear. Now, it cuts the commercial. Now, we come back. We cut back. And now, we get the librarian, Peter Avalon. And he's cutting a, pro, a promo with Lever Bates. Lever Bates. And they're in the middle of the ring. All of a sudden, you see the crowd pop. Here comes my boy, John Moxley. And he beats, <laughs> he, he freaking beats the librarian, Peter Avalon, in the middle of the ring. He hits his paradigm shift. That's the name of his move. I was I kept calling it Dirty D because I saw, he's just so used to be calling Dean Ambrose in WWE. It's called paradigm shift. He hits that on Avalon, kicks him out of the ring. He takes the mic and said, yo, you want to add that? That draw, I, I didn't even lose that match. It was a draw. Why would you give me an L and add that to my wins or losses? He said, fuck the wins and losses. Fuck, the, I'm the baddest bitch in this promotion today. And I'm going to do whatever I want. And because of the fact that that win and losses added to my overall, you know, wins and loss in this, in this promotion, I'm going to do something bad to Kenny Omega. And you're going to regret it. Tony Khan, it's on your hands. On November 9th, full gear, Kenny Omega's blood will be on AEW's hands. That's what he said, and then he left the ring. So Kenny Omega, this is a non-sanction match. Kenny Omega looked to get, this should be a first blood match. Look to get bloodied up, Kenny Omega, because my boy John Moxley is pissed, pissed, and he's on a rampage. I love this heel, man, this aggressiveness. This is what I wanted from John Moxley when he was in AEW. I wanted this more than anything, bro, because John Moxley's a perfect heel, him being a heel is what I've always wanted. And WWE never wanted to do that. They wanted to make him a babyface, a tweener, whatever. Now that he's full on heel, I love it. I I just oh this is preparing my boy John Moxley for when he becomes when he becomes a, a one number one contender for the AEW title. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Now we finally get to the main event. Now we cut to commercial, but we finally get back to it, and it's showing all four men in the ring. This is SCU versus my boy Seattle Miato, the Lucha Brothers. 
What a fantastic match, son. Oh, my God. Super kicks over over here and there. We get Tope Suicinas. We get over-the-top rope somersaults. And you you know, your my boy, freaking Ray Phoenix, is a beast, man. A beast. When, I loved it when Pentagon Jr. power bombed one of the freaking, I think it was um Frankie Kazarian. When he power bombed him through the table, I was loving it. Loving it. Because I took him out of the mess. And I thought, I thought my Lucha brother was going to win this, man. And it ended up being a 1-2-3 pin. Scorpio Sky rolls up one of my Lucha brothers and they get the win. I was so mad. Uh, I was so mad because I thought the Lucha brothers was going to be the tag team champions. And they were going to hold down the division. So now we have... Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky as the first ever AEW champions. And I'm a little disappointed because this match was fantastic. But for it to end the way it did, I was mad. I was mad. AEW, you could have did better at you could have did better at ending this match and make and making the Lucha Brothers tag team champion. But it's all good. Lucha Brothers, they're they're known for having their heelish tendencies. And it's all good because of the fact that they get a rematch. Or if they're going to get a rematch, they're going to get a future match down the road. So it is all good. Y'all enjoy your title reigns, SCU. Because I'm telling you, Lucha Brothers will be back. I'm pretty sure they get a rematch at full gear. But I love the tag team titles. They look amazing, just like the AEW Heavyweight title. They look incredible. And I'm looking forward to seeing what new titles... AEW is going to bring into this promotion, whether it's going to be a United States title, uh, a television title, a hardcore title. It doesn't matter. I like these titles that they're introducing into this promotion. They look gorgeous. The only title I still have a problem with is the Women's Heavyweight Championship title. That title still pisses me off because it's so freaking small. Maybe they made it small for Rio to win. I don't know. But that title should be as big like the ones they have in the other promotion, WWE. The women's title are just as big as the men's title. Same shape, same everything. It looks glamorous. It looks gorgeous. It looks fantastic. Now, we'll see what happens. Now we're starting to see that this promotion is starting to get, you know, everything together. And they're, they're full stampede. They're full ahead. They're ready to like showcase what they can and can really compete now. Now that they have tag team title championships now... They're ready to compete with uh, WWE now, and I'm loving it. So all in all, this was a great show. I love the build up they're building for Full Gear. I can't wait to see what what they're gonna do next week because that that show next week should be the home go home show to Full Gear. We'll see, but I'm looking so forward to that pay per view, man. Everybody's you know stories are getting better and better, and it's building towards Full Gear. So, all right, squad, I'm going to let y'all get up out of here. I'm about to get up out of here as well. I wanted to bring y'all my full spoiler review for AEW this week for Wednesday Night Dynamite. So y'all stay tuned, and I'm going to still keep on bringing all that hot fire for this promotion every single week. I love y'all. Y'all already know what to do. Like, subscribe, share Geek Samurai. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.